Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting topics to talk about. As you can see, we are starting with a physique update of Samson Daura in his own magic mirror, let's put it that way. As he says in the caption, because it's been a while, and it's been a while since we saw him in this mirror, in which he looks freaking crazy right now. This is what Samson Dauda looks like right now in his off-season. Yeah, it's off-season, 18 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, and his conditioning right now is great. It's great for the off-season, and he keeps getting bigger and fuller. As he said in a recent story, and actually in a Q&A, his heaviest weight in the off-season ever was 330. And right now, it's 326. So he's 4 pounds away from his heaviest weight ever, and there is 18 more weeks. With this conditioning, I'm expecting him to be heavier than he has ever been. Somebody also asked him what he wants to improve the most for the Mr. Olympian. He says everything. So he still wants to get bigger, get better. And I don't doubt that he's actually gonna be even bigger, even more improved. I mean, at what point are we gonna say Samson is done? Samson cannot make any more progress. His physique is maxed out. We still didn't really say that, we said that about Nick Walker a couple of times, and he surprised us, he made more improvement. I think Samson is gonna be like that as well, I think he's gonna keep improving for a couple of more years, and like, does he need to get any bigger? I mean, not really, he's already far bigger than anybody in the IVB Pro League today, anybody, I mean, with his height... He has, like, all the body parts, like, his legs are big from the front, from the side, from the back, uh, arms, shoulders, chest, back, now even, everything is there. Can he be better? Can he get bigger? Sure, I mean, anybody can improve, anybody can get even bigger and better than they are. I mean, Samson especially, like, he can definitely grow those shoulders a little bit more. He can also improve the biceps and triceps, like his arms can also be a little bit bigger, like he can have better bicep peaks in the front double. But really, if he stays the same size and just comes in more conditioned, it still would work, it still would be probably enough for him to win the Mr. Olympia, that's what I think. But if he gets even bigger, which I'm pretty sure he will, if he does that and comes in the same conditioning like always, is that gonna be enough to win the Mr. Olympia? If he is 10 pounds bigger on his frame, well, if he comes with the conditioning he brought to the Arnold Classic UK stage, for example, with 10 more pounds, the same conditioning, just 10 pounds bigger, that can potentially be enough to win the Mr. Olympia. In my opinion, he is not battling for third, he is battling for second. Even though Derek Lansford says that uh, Nick Walker and Samson Dauda are battling for third, meaning the Mr. Olympia is gonna be between Hardy and Derek, it doesn't have to be the case. All these guys, in my opinion, all these guys from the top four can win the Mr. Olympia, and I think Samson has as big of a chance as anybody. Honestly, this is the closest thing to Ronnie Coleman since Ronnie Coleman. I mean, sure, Jay Cutler was probably better and Phil Heath was better in his own way, but, you know, size-wise, Samson and Ronnie are about the same height, and they are probably, like, the same size, you know, same weight. Maybe if Samson got as conditioned as Ronnie, he wouldn't be that big, that heavy, but he's the closest thing to it, let's be honest, let's be real. Will Samson ever bring crazy conditioning like Ronnie Coleman, especially in the glutes and the hamstrings? and the back, I guess, probably not. If it happened, it would blow all our minds away, but is that realistic to, to expect? No, I don't think so, but today, against Derek, against Hardy, against Nick Walker, Samson doesn't need to be that good. All these guys are very beatable, it's all about who brings what on that day. And I'm hoping that Samson this year is going to come in let's say, a little bit more conditioned than the Arnold UK, with more size, with more fullness, and with his shape, with his size, with his symmetry, with his height, he can, he can win the Mr. Olympia. You guys know that right here at the Arnold UK, some judges thought that uh, Samson deserved a win. It wasn't a clear win for Hardy. And this version of Hardy, in my opinion, beats Derek Lansford. Hardy was a little bit off with conditioning at the Mr. Olympia, so they gave it to Derek. Yeah, sure, Hardy could have just as easily won that show, it was very close, but Hardy improved conditioning a lot more. He was even better at the Arnold Classic Ohio, but still, this version of Hardy, in my opinion, beats Derek Lansford from last year. 
and Samson was close to this. And this was not Samson at his biggest, at his fullest. So let's say he brings a little bit better conditioning, and he does the same peak week protocol, and he puts on a little bit more muscle in the offseason now, which I'm pretty, I'm def, I'm sure it will happen. Is that gonna be enough to win the Mr. Olympia? It very well could be. It might be. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. So as I mentioned recently in that Olympia battle video, Derek Lancer basically said that Nick Walker and Samson Dauda are number three and four. They are no threat to him, to his title. And uh, also he said a couple of other things like, where is the best lighting? Where is the best lighting here? And he just posted this photo in which he's joking about what he said. Uh, he says, uh, found good lighting. <laughs> and I mean, it's great to see that he's joking about this. It's still better than, you know, taking it too seriously. But still, I didn't see a lot of YouTubers, big YouTubers, criticizing Derek for what he said when he was hot mic'd uh, without even knowing. So his mic was live and he said a couple of things behind Samson's and Nick's back. And he was kind of sucking up to the, to the Olympia guys. You guys can hear that in my video I made it a couple of days ago. So nobody really talked about that. They talked about when Derek said to Samson and Nick that you guys are battling for third. You know, that was face to face. That's cool. That's fine. That's, you know, just uh, their rivalry. That's fine. But what he said behind the camera when he thought nobody was listening, that was far more interesting. And here he's trying to make up for it by making this post and uh, writing this caption found good lighting which is funny you know a mr olympia you would expect him to be very confident not to care about where the lighting is good but i still get him for that i mean he's the mr olympia yeah but you know he did that pittsburgh pro gas posing where he looked his absolute best for the off season and he actually looked great compared to nick and samson and then they invited him to do this training and then expected him to take the shirt off he wasn't. Pro he probably wasn't happy the way he looked. He wasn't. He's one hundred percent. He didn't want that to be the last comparison photo before the Mister Olympia. He thought he did a great job for the Pittsburgh Pro, and he probably thought that was gonna be it. But apparently, it wasn't. And you know, Nick competed recently as well, so he was in really good condition. I get him for that. I don't like what he said behind the camera, but everything else was completely fine. Anyways, here is his physique at eighteen weeks out off-season, uh, his conditioning here is comparable to Samson Dauda, very similar, I would say equal, I would assume that his back and his glutes are in better conditioning, because Derek is like that, he's more conditioned from the back, from the front, however, he's always softer, even when he's ready for the stage, he never has that crisp look from the front as he does from the back, but as they say, shows are one from the back, so back is probably more important to be condition now as far as his physique from the front like did he improve i mean we saw him at the pittsburgh pro but that was like he probably picked for that guest pose here you can see him casually in the off season and like do i see some improvements in terms of bicep peaks i mean maybe maybe a little bit but not not a crazy amount not a lot probably pretty much the same i don't see any big improvements and overall like legs lats what we see here it's pretty much similar to what we saw last year, you know, it's, and he probably doesn't want to grow that much, he probably wants to keep his midsection as small as possible and come in as tight as he can, and uh, will that be enough? Maybe, maybe not, but that's probably all he can do right now. If he grew a little bit more, you know, with his frame, he's already pretty much maxed out, I mean, he's not as tall as Samson, Samson can grow because he's He's very tall, and, and Derek is very short, so if he blew up even more, he would probably lose on that V-taper, and I don't know if it would work in his favor, and Hunter Rambo knows what he's doing, That I think the only reason why Derek is not growing too much in the offseason is because Honey doesn't want him to grow too much, and as far as conditioning, hopefully they will bring him peeled, peeled, seriously peeled from the front, and then, then it's gonna be very difficult to beat him for anybody else. But if he comes into the stage exactly the same he was last year, because he looks the same right now as he does as he did last year in the offseason. So if he comes the same to the Mr. Olympia stage, I don't think it's gonna be enough. I think Hardy is coming very, very strong. I think Samson's gonna be improved. I know Nick is gonna be a lot better. So yeah, I mean three guys who are really good. And Derek, what are the odds of him winning again? I don't know, just coming and being on, is that gonna be enough? 
If they want him to be the Mr. Olympia, is that all they're asking for? I don't know, I don't know, but we'll see, it's gonna be very interesting to see, uh, right now, Derek looks good, sure, he looks good, does he look crazy improved, no, not really, but if you guys see it differently, tell me down below. Next up, we got an update from Quinton Mariah, very interesting one, after he placed second at Toronto Pro, which was an amazing comeback, I'm really happy for the guy, he didn't like what uh, Matt Jensen did with him for the New York Pro, and then he decided to take the reins and to do what he thinks is the best, and I thought he was prepping alone, I know he tagged Dorian Hamilton and some other guys a couple of times, and I thought he was just, you know, talking to them, you know, there, they were probably suggesting him a couple of things, but apparently no, it turned out that actually Dorian Hamilton did his peak week. So Quinton says, Dorian Hamilton was the main guy that helped me peak for this. I trusted my ability to put on muscle, to cut fat, but not my ability to peak myself heading into a show. As much as we work together for years, it's still very hard to come in and play catch up and try to fix something with very little time with a guy that is now mentally unstable, guess who? And probably not listening to everything you're saying, lol. But Dorian's adaptability is like no other, I do believe he's one of the best coaches in the world, if he had done a full prep together, or if we do one again in the future, I know for a fact we will crush it. So yeah, it makes sense, this is exactly what I was saying he should do, he is still sponsored by HD Muscle, which is Dorian Hamilton's uh, company, so I'm sure he is on good terms with Dorian, even though he stopped working with him as a coach, he had his reasons, and they actually made a lot of sense, and I'm sure Dorian understood that, and uh, after he saw how, uh, how badly Quinton failed with Matt, he was willing to help him, but uh, Quinton here says he was the main guy who helped him peak for this. So there were other people involved as well. And he says that he is not mentally stable right now and he is probably not listening to everything they're saying. So yeah, it's a bit tricky, but in my opinion, he should just stick with Dorian and do exactly what Dorian says from now on. I mean, prior to working with Matt, Dorian did really well with Quinton. And then he had two years off, so he made progress. And now Dorian just helped him peak and they peaked so well. And now you could finally see the improvements. So let's say Matt Jensen did help uh, Quinton put on the muscle, but now with, with, with the right peak week, you could see the results. And uh, Dorian was there to help him with that. So I'm pretty sure these guys are going to continue working together. Hopefully this time around, Quinton is actually going to listen everything and just work with Dorian the best way possible. I think the next show Quinton is going to do is Vancouver Pro, which I think he's going to win. Who else is going to beat him? Hassan Mustafa? Come on, are you kidding me? No way. He's gonna win that show, he's gonna go to the Mr. Olympia, uh, can he place inside of the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia? Probably not, but still, still just going there would be an amazing achievement. In a couple of years, can he be a top 10 guy at the Mr. Olympia? Absolutely, absolutely he can. He can probably place even higher than that at some point in his career. He has all the tools necessary, it is gonna take some time, because his frame is freaking enormous. Uh, he needs to fill it out, he needs to let his body mature, you know, bring that conditioning to a decent level, get that density, that fullness, that hardness with the size, with conditioning and everything, and like with his structure and shape, he can be a force, no doubt about that. Hopefully he will actually continue working with Dorian and not switch coaches anymore, I think Dorian is perfect for him, and I think these guys can go a long way together. Now as far as Hassan, what does this guy need to do? to win a show this year, I don't know if it's gonna be possible, I mean, he was probably dieting pretty hard, by the way, he was also prepped by Dorian Hamilton for this show, and I'm really curious to hear what Dorian has to say, because Dorian usually brings his guys in good conditioning, I know he was prepping Anton Voyant for the Arnold Classic, and Anton was freaking peeled, and Hassan, it's not like he needs to keep the size and he can't diet down, no, 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 he has so much size, and his conditioning is like 12 weeks out, right? I mean, 8 weeks out at the best. This is not 6 weeks out. This is not good for 6 weeks out. This is 8 weeks out conditioning. But if he somehow manages to get it to 6 weeks out, with all the muscle he has, he might even win a show. I wouldn't bet on it. He was 6. He actually placed 6 at this show at Toronto Pro. So, I mean, can he jump 6 places or let's say 5 places because Akim is no longer gonna compete? I mean, I don't know. 
I don't know. But maybe maybe he was dieting very hard and now after carving up for the show and uh, probably relaxing a little bit after the show, it happens sometimes. I see it when guys are really struggling to, to lose the weight and then they compete, they're not ready. But then they compete, they carb up, they relax for a couple of days and when they start their fat burn process again, they actually start burning a lot faster. So maybe he's gonna get to like four weeks out conditioning, which would be probably enough. With all this muscle, it could be enough. But I don't see him winning one Vancouver Pro against Quinton Araya. He doesn't have enough time to improve conditioning that much. But, you know, winning another show later, maybe, maybe. However, this show was a disaster. This was embarrassing, to put it mildly. Whatever you guys think about Hassan's conditioning or whichever part of this video, tell us down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this about bodybuilding, guys, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.